In this video, I'll be talking about how to insert um, any kind of extra items that aren't notes, anything that you'll find over here in the palettes, um, as well as you know dealing with slurs and ties and that kind of thing. So I've got some notes here. Um, and I'm just going to show you pretty much how to insert just about anything here. There's, there's multiple ways that you can insert stuff. And I'll try to show you everything that I can think of. Um, mainly, what I find myself inserting a lot of, and I, try, I always try to find a quicker way to do it because it takes so long sometimes, is these articulations and ornaments over here. <clears throat> and I have this customized for just what I use for band. But um, there's a whole lot of stuff in here. So, and sometimes if you're trying to, like, you've lost a part to your band sets or your, your orchestra set or something, and you're just trying to write it out from the score so you don't have to order a whole new um, set of music, um, or just for the time being until you can get a new set ordered. Um, sometimes some songs have a lot of articulations and ornaments in them, so that really takes a long time. And I, so far, I haven't really figured out a better way to do it um, other than just selecting note heads like this. So let's say that I needed a staccato on the first note of every measure here. The best, quickest way I've found to do it is to enter all my, all my music, all my notes, and then come in later and just do, you know, a span at one time of uh, all the notes that need a staccato, hold down control, click on them, and then come over here to whatever it is that I need to insert and double click. And they all appear like that. So, you know, if I was doing, you know, all the second notes have an accent on them, I would hold down control, click, 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 and then go over here and double click my accent. Um, if you just need one thing here and there, um, like for Mata's, you can just drag, drag them over the note head until it turns blue drop it. If you try to drag it over where like where you want it to sit, it's not going to stick. You have to drag it on top of the note head so the program knows exactly where you want it. Um, if uh, you can switch stems around, you can switch um, where the accent is by pushing X. If you click on the note head and push X, it'll flip the stem the other direction. If you just click on the accent and push X, it drops it to the other, it flips it over to the other side. So, um, yeah, that's kind of handy sometimes. And so those are the two ways you can, you can insert stuff. You drag it and drop it or select the note head and double click. Um, the way that slurs work, We'll go over here to lines. Slurs, you can drag and drop it and it'll only go to the next one and you can manually, you know, drag it to wherever you want it to be. Or you can click the first note in the slur and then click the last note or hold down shift and click the last note in the slur. So click the first note head. Control might also work. I've never tried it. Let's see if this works and push S, just S for slur. That works too. So select the first first note in your slur and either pull down shift or control. Click the last note in your slur, push S, and the slur will show up over the whole thing. So that's really nice. I didn't know about that for a long time. I just I was in here manually stretching it wherever I needed it to go. But um Having that function to manually adjust it is kind of nice because if you've got some some weird weird music in there where you're jumping all over the place and you have to slur, you can stretch these however you need them to go, and it's kind of nice. So get rid of this. Um, the same kind of works for crescendos and decrescendos. You select the measure, select the entire space where you want the crescendo or the decrescendo to be stretched out across. That's kind of nice because um, you can't, you can drag and drop it, which that's annoying to deal with. Sometimes you have to do it. Um, if I just wanted my crescendo under these two notes, 
again, you just do the same thing that you would with a slur. Select the first note, select, hold down shift or control, select the last note, and it'll add in uh, whatever you tell it. So that's kind of nice. And again, with these, you can manually adjust them and how wide and all that jazz. It's kind of nice that you can just, you know, have a basic one you just put in there, but you can also adjust it to however you want it to look. Um, bar lines. If you click, if you select the measure and double click, it'll enter it at the end of the measure. Um, let's see what it does for the beginning. Beginning repeats here. Yeah, it'll put it at the beginning of the measure. So exactly where it needs to go is where it puts it. If it's a if, it, if it's a bar line that comes at the end of the measure, you click the measure, double click the bar line, it'll show up there. Um, and you can also drag and drop them as well. Bar lines are not terrible to figure out. Um, when you're changing key signatures or time signatures, you know, hold it over the measure until it highlights and drop it. If you're wanting to change in the middle of a song, obviously it's going to show up at the, at the beginning of the measure where you drop it. Same goes for time signatures. Uh, notice if you have music written in there already, it's going to mess with your program here. Um, music score doesn't like it. It's not going to let you change it if you already have music in there. So try to get those time changes in ahead of time. Also, notice that if you uh, change your key signature after you've already put notes in, it'll keep it exactly the way it was written before. Uh, you can't see it because I don't have any notes for that. But um, it'll keep it the way it was written before, but it just puts in a bunch of accidentals. So try to get your key changes in there before you write music as well. Clefs work the same way. Um, grace notes, if you select the note head you want it attached to, enter it, and then you can, if it's blue it's selected, you could change. You can change the pitch however you want it. You can also slur from a grace note to the note, but they have those in here. I guess that it doesn't normally come on it. You have to put it on there yourself. But yeah, not terrible. Um, glisses. Let's see. Select the first note and the last note, or the first note and the one you want it to connect to. Oh, I guess it goes to the one after it, too. All you have to do is select the first one, and it looks like. So if I click this note, it'll give me a gliss after it. Breaths and pauses. Drag it onto a note and it appears after it. Um, accidentals. Accidentals are also up here, so when you're entering notes, you can put accidentals on there. But you can also access the accidentals over here as well. Dynamics. Select the note head you want it to appear under. Double click and it shows up. You can also drag and drop them. Kind of a pain though. Um, Sometimes they end up real low below something or real high, and you have to move them up or down anyway. Um, haven't dealt a whole lot with note heads. That's percussion stuff, I imagine. Tremolo, just drag it over the head that you want it to appear on, and it shows up there. Drag it and drop. Repeats and jumps. It'll show up at the beginning of the measure that you put it on. Uh, except the words. All these word directions will show up at the end of the measure. Tempo, drag and drop at the beginning, or right over the note where you want it to appear. Text, again, select the note head. You can also do Control T. That's pretty quick. I like using Control T. And there's actually an editor down here, so you can edit your text pretty easily. Um, measure numbers, rehearsal numbers. I use these all the time. You can drag and drop them, but uh, I always use, I think you can drag and drop them. Yeah, you have to, there you go. They always appear at the top of your score, and it shows out, or shows up throughout your parts if you split your score up into individual parts. Um, but I like to use Control-M for measure. It's really easy to put them in. You can change the, the uh, size of those as well, which is nice. They're kind of big, so. Breaks and spacers, these help you bump things where you need them to go. This will bump it down to the next line. This will bump it to the next page. 
I uh, haven't quite figured that one out yet. I don't really use it. And this, you know, stretches stuff. You just drag and drop it where you want it to go. If I drop it in this measure, everything after that measure bumps, bumps down the line. And that's everything.